welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. And today we bring with you or to you a very exciting segment, Phil Sharkey. Phil, good to see you as always. Jonathan, great to see you. And uh, again, we're sort of uh, we thought we had wrapped up all uh, all we could say about this George Santos uh, individual, but I I have more. He keeps giving us more more juice and more more stuff. So I, I thought I'd go over with you today, if you like, just strictly with the finances. Rich with content and uh, Sharky on Santos. Let's have it. Uh, yeah. Let's hear all about the the. Let's hear about the finances that aren't. <laughs> so I'm going to try. Well, Jonathan, first of all, he is being investigated by three entities right now: the Nassau County District Attorney, the New York State Attorney General, and also the Federal Prosecutor for the Eastern District of New York. So these are the people looking into these financial claims uh, on his own filings to to become uh, to run for for politics and his financial reports. In a New York Times article, um, he previously filed with the Federal Election Commission, as we know, quite a few documents indicating his loan ratio, where he loaned his campaign $700,000 in 22 uh, of his own personal funds. So the expert said this was uh, uh, struggling to interpret the change because then he later changed uh, in 22, the box marked personal funds of the candidate. So initially it was a loan from himself. Then his campaign went back and unchecked that box that it wasn't a loan from himself. Uh, I've never seen this confused looking uh, uh, at the FEC filing, said Jordan Leibowitz, a spokesman for the Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington, a nonprofit group. She said even as recently as last Tuesday, the Santos campaign filed 10 amended reports updating fil filings he had previously sent to the FEC over the last two years. So there's quite a few changes. Understand that these things happen, especially with a, a new a new uh, person in politics or, or uh, in, in the Congress. But she said the big thing is this money. She goes, according to the financial disclosure, Santos filed as a candidate, claimed that just a few years ago he was earning fifty five thousand a year to owning and managing a company, the Devolder Organization, worth more than millions of dollars. Uh, this was his own business, the Devolder Organization. In a radio interview last month, Jonathan, he said the money came from his work at this organization which he said involved deal building and specialty consulting. He later uh, was just on a, a podcast just last month, Bannon's War Room, and they asked him flat out where the money came for the loan. He said, I worked hard for that money, and I'll tell you what, it didn't come from Ukraine, Russia, or China. So again, there's <laughs> his, his spunkiness where he's going to attack uh, and not explain to us like, like many politicians do. Also, we have just one quote from a Brett Kappel. He's a leading elections lawyer who advises both Democrats and Republicans on campaign finance issues. And he said it would be a very big deal if Santos was admitting he did not personally finance the campaign loans. He said if the, can if the candidate's personal wealth wasn't the source of the loan, then what was, which is my question. The only other permissible source would be a bank, and they would require collateral for a loan of this size. If it wasn't a bank and it wasn't from personal, the only other alter, uh, alternatives would be illegal sources. So when you put seven hundred thousand into your 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 biz, they're going to ask you where that money came from, Jonathan. It's it's thoroughly amazing, Phil. The only thing that's consistent here are the inconsistencies, and uh, time and time again. And um, you know, I know in your line of work, you you probably look for one or two inconsistencies. What do you do when you run into everything is inconsistent? And, and it's true, <laughs> and it's interesting, and it's sort of sad for our country that we just sort of take this where okay, so we'll deal with the educational lies, which was high school, college, all lies that he was on the volleyball team, that he's six foot two when he's like my size at five foot seven. <laughs> That, that he's had two knee surgeries because of his commitment to volleyball. We'll go to all past that. We'll get past all the employment. The only job that was confirmed he worked for is a company that ended up being brought down by Ponzi scheme allegations. We'll, we'll pass all that through. We'll pass through all his conversation that he's Jewish or Jewish, Jewish. We'll Ish. go past that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But finally, when we get to the finances, hopefully, Jonathan, uh, that's where we may make some decisions on him. So I just want to sort of go over again. What do we know about him? We know two years ago, he's making 55000 a year, and then he was evicted, evicted twice for failure to pay rent. Now he takes up this company where he becomes a millionaire. I mean, congratulations. I, I think that's all of our dreams. Um, but then I have a list of sort of all his claims. Now, he his campaign gave $11,000 payment to a property in Long Island which is fine for campaign offices. He said they had proof that he was living there for three months. That's not okay. You can't use campaign finances for your own living expenses. Personal living expenses, yeah. Can't, you can't do that. He also said it was for a company called 123 Cleaners, uh, which was not a company at all. 
In August of 21, when he was doing fundraising, his chief of his his head fundraiser was charged with impersonating being Kevin McCarthy's chief of staff. So they would call people. That was before Mr. McCarthy was the, the speaker, but they would call as his chief of staff, and that was very good for getting donations. Unfortunately, or fortunately, it's, it's a total lie. It had nothing to do with that. Um, he got 41,000 in donations from an Andrew Intaker. He's a cousin of a Russian oligarch, Victor Vexelberg. Um, he got a billionaire in New York, John Katsimaitis, who owns grocery chains to donate 4650 He said, never again. That's all he's saying about it. Uh, Charles Vallone, um, he was duped. He donated 17900 and uh, Santos paid his holding company. That was the company that held the rent on that Long, Long Island property. The campaign paid 42000 to a Sam Mealy. He was the individual who impersonated the chief of staff. Uh, he spent 40000 on air, 30000 on hotels, 14000 on cars. Now, does that sound like the, the key thing to note is that, yes, that is a lot more than most campaigns, because a lot of my friends go, maybe that's what it costs. No, it doesn't. That's way above what other campaigns spend for those same <laughs> items. Uh, so this I, is always great. This is all great stuff. It sounds like a, a true a bona fide candidate to be a politician. No, I'm just kidding. He, <laughs> he does. And I, and I know I know we say and you know we fact check no. after they have a debate and everything's wrong, but there's like not a shred of integrity here. There's nothing to the fiber of this gentleman as being honest. I, I think it's pathological or or what exactly. And then he gets into sort of negativity regarding like when he's in Brazil, he was charged with stealing checks of seven hundred dollars from the man his mother was caring for. You get down to sort of heinous things. We talked about the Jewish claim and that his grandparents were Holocaust survivors. Uh, there was a his, his mother or her his mother was a victim in 9-11 and she wasn't even in the country at the time. Exactly. And, and proven <laughs> at first, like, well, maybe go, well, maybe she, you know, received some type of ailment from the debris and the cancer causing agents. She wasn't, they proved she wasn't even in the country at that time. So it's this spin. Uh, he said he owned 13 properties during his huge increase in wealth. He owns no properties. Uh, he was a landlord for 13 properties. He's also gotten into trouble. He brought in, they tried to bring in a guy called Thomas Datweiler as treasurer. This is a gentleman, Jonathan, who's sort of the, called the fixer in the Republican Party. He comes into campaigns when there are problems and he gets it working right and he fixes what's going on. And he released on Monday, just this past Monday, so we were informed the Santos campaign that Mr. Datweiler would not be serving as a treasurer. This is his attorney said. Uh, appears there's been some type of disconnect between that conversation and the filings of today. And I read that because the filings of today were that the campaign filed that he was their treasurer. And they said on a, a, a ABC News on Wednesday that the confusion over this is very strange situation because those amendments that were filed today are electronically signed, or at least they say they're electronically signed by the new treasurer. And they point out that if someone is signing electronically a false signature, that's a crime you know that without their consent that's a big that's a big no-no so. so so i would think that it'd be a whole uh it, you know th there's a couple of different sides to this there's the one side that is all the myths truths the lies right and then there's the whole criminal side which is what you've got into today all these uh, uh activities alleged activities that clearly would be fraudulent in nature some of which are breaking the law um i guess one of the larger questions that that sort of comes to my mind is and, and, you know, in your line of work and investigating people and, you know, I, I think uh, as you've expressed to us before, you know, when you when you uncover uh, the tip of the iceberg, there's usually more behind it and keep going, keep going, keep going. I, I guess and, you know, we can play armchair psychologists from a distance here, but with the web of lies that existed, how does somebody like this just perpetuate it and perpetuate it and get through so many different, you know, roadblocks, so to speak, and yeah, keep going. It is, it, it is interesting. The first thing I see in my line of work, and this happens in for the background checks we do, he's obviously very personable. So, you know, I have a lot of clients where the person comes in, it's not the ones smelling of booze or acting all crazy. It's the ones that are very smooth, very likable. I think he's very likable. I think mm -hmm. he became Jewish because he was speaking to a Jewish uh, committee and wanted to relate and, and get their vote. You know, he becomes, he sort of molds into whoever he's talking to. So it's sort of the sociopathic tendencies they can meld into anything and convince anybody of anything and absolutely yeah. and it's like you know hey jonathan we got a lot in common i'm this this and this the, the yeah. story's not even about college but he said in high school and it's a sad story he went to a 
prep school, very expensive one his parents paid for. It. And he said on his junior year, he had to stop going because they could no longer afford it. And it's a very tearful, sort of sad story. Then the right. school comes back and says he's never was on their campus day one. You know, he's never. So, been so playing up people's uh, emotions, uh, you know, perpetuating the story. But to do it in such a public way and to have so many thousands, tens of thousands of people do by it is is truly remarkable. Yeah, I think and I think it does work until eventually, hopefully, we as a society, the information comes to the surface. Like you said, tip of the iceberg in my business, we say a leopard doesn't change their spot. He's not going to stop lying. That's what he's doing. And my concern is he's on two committees now. He's not just voting on laws and wars, but he's on a committee for small business. That really impacts me. I'm a small business. Sure. He's also on a committee for science, space and technology. Gosh, only knows what what he would you know vote for or what he thinks is uh, is r- correct thinking. So, Phil, does this sort of speak to a larger issue here um, where we're, you know, and and perhaps in, in your line of work also, people believe what they want to believe because they want it to be true, as opposed to whether, you know, finding a shred of evidence and sort of saying, hey, two plus two doesn't add up here. Absolutely. And, Again, he's likable. Unfortunately, we have such a political divide in our country that he fits. You know, if you're a Republican and you want him, you sort of look past things. If you're a Democrat and you want him, you know, whatever side of the, the, the aisle you're on you're going to put up with some of the things, you know, we saw it in Georgia with, with Herschel Walker. And I think you see it here where it's like, okay, we'll look into them, but boy, we need that remote. And uh, I, I'm again, not picking one party over the other at all. I'm just saying, I think that's what happens a lot where, well, we'll look past it as sort of almost like a funny SNL skit. Well, so he, so sure. he was a volleyball player. So he was right. Like, you know, so I mean, says, perhaps if you're a Democrat, you're sitting here thinking, oh, this is great. It's going to blow up in their face. And then it right. doesn't. Right. You, know? And that, you know, it gets me mad. Like some of my clients with other people do driving record checks on a lot of people. And they'll go like, well, they don't have a license. So what? I'm like, it's the so what? It's like this guy, he's six foot two. Well, he's not. He's only five seven. It's like, so what? It's like those blatant lies, those insult my intelligence. And I don't think we should stand for it. It's like at least, you know, have ones that I can't look at you and say, of course, you're not six foot two. What are you doing? I mean, I wonder about your yeah. <laughs> Really thoroughly amazing. And I think, uh, um, you know, bringing it back to what you do every day, Phil, I, I would imagine there's a lot of this that goes on on a much smaller scale. And to your point, you know, if if something doesn't look right, investigate. You dig a little deeper because the likelihood is that, you know, it's it's not accurate. A- absolutely, um, Jonathan. It affects your branding. It affects your, your marketing. It affects your employee morale. It infects your everything. Uh, small businesses could get bankrupt from from someone on this type of, of 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 ilk, and larger companies get impacted too. So that's what we do every day. You know, we do six, seven, eight hundred backgrounds a month, and again, I always say a solid thirty percent turn out fraudulent. Many very similar to this gentleman. Wonderful, Phil Sharkey, Sharkey on Santos. Uh, great to give uh, some some context and perspective on on this very public investigation, and it's uh, I think going to get messier as time goes on. But also to uh, bring it back to what you do every day, Phil Sharkey of the Higher Authority. If people want to reach out to you and have an inkling that somebody they're talking to for their business is maybe uh, not what they portray to be, what's the best way for them to reach out? What's the best way for them to communicate with you? Yeah, Jonathan, right on the web at higherauth.com. That's h i r e a u t h dot com. You can email me at psharkey, that's me, at higheroth.com. And you can also call us. Uh, we actually have people answer the phones here. This is a, a radical idea. They, our clients seem to like that, but that's at uh, 508-230-5901 or toll free at 888-230-5901. Great stuff, Phil. Always bringing us some topical, some timely, some really relevant stuff for the marketplace and for small businesses alike. So I always appreciate Phil Sharkey from the Higher Authority. Thanks so much, Jonathan. Great to talk with you.